Many terrifying animals live deep beyond the waves, like this vampire squid living 3,000 feet below the surface in almost complete darkness. This animal has a cloak like a vampire's. That's why it's called the vampire squid. Deep down at the bottom, it can't use ink to defend itself. So this animal has developed an unusual tactic. It glows slightly to scare away predators. If this tactic fails, the vampire squid can turn its body inside out, revealing tiny spikes. When you translate its scientific name, Vampirotuthis infernalis, it literally means vampire squid from the nether. Despite its terrifying looks, it's a harmless ocean animal. This previous creature was not from space, but this object definitely is. Before Elon Musk found a way to reuse rockets, NASA would simply drop old ones after launching astronauts into space, most of the time in the ocean or deserts. In 2012, Jeff Bezos launched a mission to find the Apollo 11 rocket. They found it by using sonar, but it was in terrible condition. It was sitting on the bottom of the ocean, not far from the predicted site. They were able to rescue the engine and reconstruct two of them. The most famous lost city is Atlantis, but sadly, we still haven't discovered it. However, Heraklion was also just a myth until one British pilot saw something that looked like a city while flying over the Mediterranean Sea. He reported it, and 60 years later, a group of divers went there. They were shocked when they found an entire city underwater. It was loaded with artifacts that could tell us a lot about the history of the place. Now it's one of the best underwater archaeological sites in the world. It's believed that the rising sea caused the whole city to go underwater. The Titanic sank in 1912. The wreck was claimed to be officially discovered 74 years later. In reality, though, a fisherman found the Titanic eight years earlier while fishing in the Atlantic Ocean. He was pulling out his net when he spotted a head stuck in it. Luckily, it was just a doll's head. Years later, after the fisher had passed away, his son sold the doll to a doll collector. She did a lot of digging and research on every person who had a porcelain toy on the Titanic. She found the owner of the doll. Ava Hart was on the Titanic and had a doll with her. Ava survived the catastrophe by a miracle, but her toy didn't. Hart even wrote about the doll in her journal and every detail matched the toy found by the fisherman. The tripod fish lives deep in the abyssal zone, around 20,000 feet below the surface. It's adapted to such immense depths and uses its tripod fins to stay still on the bottom. This creature doesn't have big eyes, but even if it did, these eyes would be useless in the darkness. Instead, the tripod fish uses its fins like antennas to detect any movement in the water. This creature doesn't have much luck when it comes to its love life, so it had to develop unique tactics to reproduce. One fish can be both male and female. The next bizarre creature is the lizard fish. It has tons of razor sharp teeth, a huge mouth and really big eyes, which it uses for hunting. All this makes the animal look freaky. The lizard fish lives at depths of around 11,000 feet in the midnight zone, where there is zero light. This freak of nature basically eats everything it can fit inside its mouth, from small fish to other lizard fish. On the other hand, when they see other reptile fish, they probably fall in love instead, because finding mates at those depths is not an easy task. Like the tripod fish, the lizard fish can be both male and female at the same time. When you think of a river, you usually picture it on land. Still, nature is quite unpredictable, and it created a river flowing under the ocean in California. It's running at a depth of around two miles. This river has everything that an ordinary river has, sunken logs, trees, and rocks. And despite its uniqueness, it's not the only one in the world. There are also others in the Amazon and Greenland. 
A terrifying creature was discovered near Angola's coast by a remote operating vehicle. It looks like it doesn't have a head or a body. It was sitting at a depth of around 4,350 feet below the surface. After doing research, scientists concluded it wasn't anything from a sci-fi movie, it was just a cluster of siphonophores stuck together. In 2015, some random guy was diving in Caesarea, and something shiny caught his eye. He reached out, grabbed it, and realized it was a gold coin. After that, he examined the bottom and found out that there were many more. He reported the incident to the local authorities, and they concluded that he had found Arabic treasure. The coins were made of solid 24 karat gold and were a few thousand years old, but due to the perfect salinity and temperature, they looked brand new. The coins belonged to a ship carrying cargo. It was caught up in a storm and unfortunately sank. One of the weirdest things ever discovered was found in the Baltic Sea. It's an anomaly that looks as if it was created by a different civilization. It was discovered by Swedish researchers, and they basically had no idea what it was. They had to ask tons of other scientists for their opinions. When you look at this formation from above, it's 200 feet long and looks exactly like a fallen spaceship. It's hard to believe that it's a natural formation, but spoiler alert, it's totally made by nature because the Baltic Sea has gone through many erosions throughout history. Most likely, the bizarre formation is the result of these processes. A group of divers in Madagascar were shocked when they found this seven-foot monstrosity of a knife on the seafloor. The speculation started immediately, and many said that the knife was from some giants that had fought megalodons and lived on Earth thousands and thousands of years ago. That could make a nice story, but the knife is most likely a movie prop that was lost at sea. One of the ocean's most bizarre animals is the frilled shark. It's believed that this fish is the reason for all those sea serpent stories that sea explorers of the past wrote about. These animals live pretty deep in the ocean, but sometimes they can be seen in shallow waters. It's super rare, but possible. The frilled shark has a big mouth sporting around 300 teeth. It also has a long body that looks like a lizard's, and it is truly a unique species of shark. Its prey can be half of its size because this shark's stomach is like that of a snake, and it can swallow huge fish or crustaceans. Spotting a few worms in your garden is no big deal, but after seeing a 26-foot long one in the ocean, you will make your wetsuit a little wetter. This worm is super rare, and it's completely harmless to humans. It's actually not a giant worm. It's a cluster of zooids that are stuck together in a worm-shaped formation. They usually only eat plankton, bacteria, and other tiny things that can be found in the ocean. Probably the scariest thing in the ocean that is 100% real is the Magna Pinna, which can be found at crazy depths of 20,000 feet below the surface. This monster looks like an underwater slender man, but it's just a squid with really long tentacles that can reach a terrifying size of 8 feet. This guy has only been seen a few times, and basically, we don't know much about this creature so far. Here's an ordinary fish. And here's a fish that was supposed to become a human. But it didn't. And not because it didn't come out of the ocean. The second fish has more intelligent eyes. But there's almost no difference between them. And that's why... Oh, and do you see that silhouette in the shadow? This big ugly monster is one of the key characters in this story. And it hates the intelligent fish. But I'll tell you more about that later. So the ocean world is an eternal struggle for survival. The big and strong eat those who are smaller and weaker. 400 million years ago, it was the same, only on an even larger scale. Real monsters inhabited the ocean. Giant reptilian fish ate long sea centipedes. Some fish were covered with bony shells. Others had razor sharp teeth. As a result, some weaker fish escaped the ocean to survive. 
Other creatures left it to get food or out of curiosity. And so, according to the theory of evolution, in the next millions of years, these fish began to grow limbs and hair and climb trees. And you know what happened next. And now, let's imagine that nothing forced fish to go to dry land. What if the ocean wasn't so dangerous, and there were a lot of algae and phytoplankton, and fewer ancient and giant sharks? There's food and there are no enemies. Why would fish need to leave this place and spend a couple hundred million years growing limbs? Fish could chill and hang out in the water. Some reached the surface, but they didn't like it there. Strong winds, lightning flashes, it all looked unfriendly. Millions of years passed, and fish were still around. More dangerous sea inhabitants appeared, but fish just grew longer fins to swim faster. Other fish grew plates on their tails to fend off enemies. But in general, most fish still look the same as they did millions of years ago. Their brains were developing. They learned how to communicate with one another using echolocation and movements of tails and fins. All day long, fish swam, looked for food, multiplied, and hung out together. It made no sense for them to evolve. And now, let's take a look at the history of humans. So, fish came to land and grew limbs. Then the struggle for survival began. Some creatures became carnivores, others turned into herbivores. Some ate grass, and others noticed ripe fruit on trees. These crawling creatures started reaching for fruit. After millions of years of such attempts, the creatures' limbs began to grow longer. They stood on their back legs and finally became upright. These ancient animals, the ancestors of primates, learned to climb trees to get more fruit. Then some of them started using stones to crack nutshells. Others began to throw sticks into branches to knock down ancient apples. The more these animals interacted with the environment, the more their brains developed. In addition to saber-toothed tigers and other ancient monsters that tried to eat primates, there were also bad weather conditions that caused a lot of problems. Ancient apes began to hide in caves and even create shelters from branches and leaves. Then someone accidentally started a fire, and it changed the rules of the game. New neuron connections opened up in the brain, and it led to abstract thinking. People built bonfires in caves and watched flames cast shadows on the walls. Images began to form in their heads. The ancestors of people began to make drawings. And so, step by step, over millions of years, they evolved into Homo sapiens. Of course, no one knows precisely how it was, but let's assume that evolution worked this way. The struggle for survival formed the human brain. And now, let's go back to the ocean, where fish swim. They can move from side to side, up and down, and they don't need to reach any branches and fruit. Food is floating everywhere around them. Fish are cold-blooded, so they don't freeze. They don't need to hide from the rain or anything else so they don't need to build roofs and shelters and start a fire. But still, something changes in their minds. Fish often swim to the surface to see this bright light from the sun. Through the clear water, they see the starry sky and the bright moon. And of course, these pictures form new neural connections in their brains. Fish are curious, and they think about how to explore the land. Their gill-based respiratory system doesn't allow them to be out of the water for a long time. Fish begin to contemplate this world. Over hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, they learn to communicate with one another and begin to understand how the cycle of life in the ocean works. Some fish form large colonies and build houses inside coral reefs. But these houses look like big anthills, not like buildings. Fish stay there to hide from enemies and to have rest. Also, fish meet other enemies, birds. Gulls and pelicans catch lunch when fish rise close to the surface. Small fish decide never to swim there and create a law forbidding them from approaching the surface. The appearance of this unspoken statute forms society. Some fish train to fend off seagulls. Fish hold sharp stones 
pieces of coral or shells in their teeth. And when gulls catch them, these fish hit the bird's feet with corals. Also, fish manage to catch their winged enemies. When some seagull dives under the water, fish attack it from all sides. They do this to study the seagull's body and understand how it can fly and breathe on the surface. Fish become wise creatures, like highly developed dolphins. They understand more and more about the planet, but don't strive to get out of the water because there's no need for it. But then they discover something creepy. Fish swim toward the shore and see how big bald creatures without scales with smooth skin, arms, and legs dive into the water. Fish swim closer to get to know them, but these creatures catch them with their webbed hands. Now fish have another more dangerous enemy, the sea people. They are intelligent, cruel, and strong. To understand these creatures, let's go back to the real world and look at seals, dolphins, whales, and walruses. All these animals are mammals, which means warm blood flows in them. But why are they so different from fish? Seals and sea lions have the same ancestor as dogs. Manatees and elephants have common origins. Whales and dolphins are marine versions of hippos and hoofed animals. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the ancestors of all these mammals were cold-blooded fish. They got out of the ocean and began to explore the land. Their bodies started to change and their blood temperature rose. But some of these animals decided not to go far from the water. Those that left the ocean became dogs, bears, and elephants. And those who stayed close to the oceans and seas became mammals adapted to the water. They didn't explore the land for various reasons. Some animals hid in the water from land enemies. Perhaps some couldn't spend a long time under the scorching sun. They transformed into animals with fins. They don't have gills, but can hold their breath underwater for a few minutes. And now, imagine if primates living in trees moved to the shore. Their skin would lose its fur, webbing would grow on their fingers, and their whole body would get covered with a thick layer of fat. They would develop intelligence and become sea people. Each of them would weigh as much as a polar bear because of subcutaneous fat. The fact is that all marine mammals need a lot of fat to protect their body from the cold. A large amount of fat makes them mobile and fast in the water. Now, intelligent, peaceful fish have to fight with cruel sea people. But who will win in this conflict? I think we need another video to find out. Imagine a world where instead of water, the oceans are made of methane. Yeah, that's right. Instead of swimming in H2O, you'd be paddling around in CH4. It's like Mother Nature's version of a fizzy drink. Such oceans actually exist on one of Saturn's moons called Titan. In fact, the methane and ethane on Titan play a similar role to the water on Earth. They cycle through the atmosphere and form clouds that eventually rain down onto the surface. They were discovered by the Cassini-Huygens space probe. And apparently, our entire planet's oil reserves could fit in one of Titan's puddles. Even the desert sand dunes on Titan have more organics than all of Earth's coal reserves. Who knew that Titan was the place to go if you're ever in need of fuel for your car? Now, obviously, there are some things that distinguish methane lakes from our water ones. First, the temperature on Titan is around negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like taking a dip in a giant glass of liquid nitrogen. Not exactly ideal for a beach day, is it? Methane is also less dense than water. So if you were to go swimming in such an ocean, you'd float like a balloon. On the bright side, it would make doing the backstroke a lot easier. Next, while water waves can be pretty majestic, unfortunately, we can't ride any on Titan. Cassini didn't detect any big waves there. Maybe it's due to low seasonal winds, or the fact that some of the lakes are much smaller than Earth's lakes, but we don't know for sure. 
Also, I know what you're thinking. If the oceans are made of methane, could you set them on fire? Technically, yes. Methane is a highly flammable gas. So if you were to light a match in a methane ocean, you'd get a pretty impressive, but dangerous, blaze. So, given all these differences, the question arises. What would a planet with such oceans look like? Well, we can make some guesses by looking at Titan. First of all, its atmosphere, composed primarily of methane, would be incredibly thick. Titan's atmosphere reaches nearly 370 miles into space, and the atmospheric pressure there is 60% greater than Earth's. So if you ever wanted to experience the feeling of swimming super deep in the ocean, now's your chance. Also, methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that traps the sun's heat really well. That's why our planet would warm up faster than a sauna. You may ask, why is it so cold on Titan then? This is because this moon is very far from the sun and light doesn't reach it well. But if we place our planet somewhere in the middle, then the temperature may even be quite comfortable. Actually, methane oceans on a planet could really spice up the climate. The planet would be a breeding ground for methane clouds. Just like on Titan, it could form an orange-colored haze, or smog, that would make our planet look like a real mystery. It would be difficult to see us from space without some special telescopes. And let's not forget about methane storms. They would also occasionally drench the surface, so remember to bring your umbrella. But hey, at least the heavy, carbon-rich compounds would make for some pretty sweet dune fields. And finally, the most important difference. While water oceans on Earth are teeming with all sorts of creatures, we're not sure if there's any life in methane oceans on Titan. If there is, they'd have to be pretty tough to survive in such extreme conditions. So if life on such a planet exists, it would be very different from what we're used to seeing on Earth. For example, microbes might be able to handle it. These tiny resilient creatures can survive in a wide range of environments, including extreme ones. So it's possible that microbial life could exist in methane oceans. And what about us and animals? Well, scientist Robert Zubrin thinks that Titan might be the perfect place for humans to colonize in our solar system. According to him, this little moon has everything we need to survive and thrive. And if it's possible on that moon, then it could work with a planet too. For starters, we'd need some oxygen to breathe. We could use nitrogen and methane in the atmosphere to create breathable air and rocket fuel. We could also use these elements to make some fertilizers and grow plants. Next up, we'd need water. Since the oceans are made of methane, we can't exactly drink them. We'd need to find or create sources of water. Scientists believe that it actually may be hidden below the surface on Titan, together with some ammonia. We could use it to drink or create even more oxygen. So with all of these resources, we could create a self-sustaining colony even in a place with methane oceans. Piece of cake. Although there are always alternatives. Maybe we could become methane breathers, evolve into organisms that use methane instead of oxygen. For example, we could get some large lungs because we'd have to inhale a much larger volume of air since methane is less dense than oxygen. But this is pure sci-fi. Methane oceans are not the only unusual oceans in space. It turns out that seas on diamond planets may be even weirder. Take WASP-12b, for example. This exoplanet, located about 1,200 light years away, might have oceans of tar. That's right, tar. The planet has more carbon than oxygen, which means its crust is probably made of things like diamond and graphite, instead of your average silica-based minerals like granite. Imagine stepping on this planet, and the first thing you notice is that the beaches are made up of black goo. It's like stepping into a nightmare where you're trapped in quicksand made of sticky sludge. So forget about the sandy beaches and crystal clear water you're used to. 
Here, you'll be living the pitch life. Your swimwear will be replaced with hazmat suits, and you'll need a sturdy pair of boots to walk on the sticky surface. But in reality, WASP-12b is not the place to look for geology of any kind. It's simply too hot for anything to survive, let alone thrive. But there might be smaller, similar exoplanets where we could potentially live. Now, you might be thinking, tar oceans? Eh, that's crazy talk. But did you know that there's a 246-foot deep lake of natural asphalt here on Earth? It's called Pitch Lake and it's located in Trinidad. It's formed when oil is forced to the surface and the lighter components evaporate, leaving the thicker, heavier pitch behind. And guess what? This lake is home to a thriving ecosystem of microbes. So if you want to live on such a planet, at least you won't be alone. You'll have plenty of company in bacteria, fungi that love to feast on carbon found in asphalt, and archaea that live on methane. And finally, there are oceans of molten rock. That's right, imagine a world where the floor is lava isn't just a game, but a reality. Welcome to 55 Cancri E, a planet so hot that the entire hemisphere facing its star is covered in magma. It's like a scene out of a heavy metal album cover. But don't worry. The other side of the planet is slightly cooler, so you can at least step off the lava and catch your breath. If you're feeling adventurous, you could always hop over to Koro T7b, another super Earth where the lava ocean is just a scorching. But this time, the night side doesn't offer much respite either. It's still seeing constant volcanic eruptions, like some sort of fireworks show. Scientists are scratching their heads trying to explain why these planets are so hot and why they haven't cooled down yet. Maybe they're just really good at retaining heat, or maybe they just have a bad temperament. Either way, it's probably best to stick to playing the floor is lava on solid ground and leave the real lava planets to someone else. All this diversity of oceans shows us that the universe is always full of surprises. It never ceases to amaze us with its creativity. Although these oceans are not suitable for human exploration, yet, they challenge our understanding of what could exist beyond our world. So, let's continue to explore.